So this is a video AI for lesson 28 for our probability. And uh, for this lesson, we're going to, for this uh, video AI, we're going to do problem 2, or 3.2.14 on page 292 of the Modeling in the Real and Complex World book. And uh, we're given two assumptions to start with. First of all, we're going to assume that each year the U.S. economy will be in one of three states, represented by the figure below, where each of these arrows represent the probability that the economy will move to another state the next year. And our second assumption is that this year is a recession. So this fir first bullet asks us to set up this system as a Markov chain, define your variables, and show your transition matrix and initial condition. So for a Markov chain, we have our set S representing the set of states we can be in. And we just can look back up at this transition diagram, and each of these circles give us each of our states. So our states are, we've got recession, we have a bull market, and we have a bear market. And a Markov chain also has to have this n by n transition matrix. But before we go straight to there, let's build a transition table first. And our table starts by we're going to we're going to look at the columns first. Now columns represent where we're coming from. So we are coming from either a recession or from a bull market or from a bear market. And then the rows represent where we, where we could possibly go to. So again, we could go to a recession, or a bull market, or a bear market. And the values of this table we can get from looking at this graph above. Now, let's start with recession. And let's look at every arrow that comes from a recession going to something else. And first of all, you can see that Recession has this arrow going from its from recession and going back to recession, and it gives us this 0 0.5 probability. So I'm going to put the 0 0.5 for from recession to recession. Similarly, we have this 0 0.1 from a recession to a bull market, and then lastly we have this 0 0.4 from a recession to a bear market. Similarly, if we look at bull market, we can look at all the arrows coming from it going to other things. So from a bull market, we have an arrow with a 0 0.05 probability. So 0 0.05 probability of going to a recession. It has a 0 0.8 probability of staying in a bull market and a 0 0.15 probability of going to a bear market. And then lastly, we can fill this out for a bear market. We have a uh, bear from a bear going to recession with a 0 0.2 probability, a bear to a bull with a 0 0.2 probability, and then finally, a bear to a bear with 0 0.6. Now, from this transition table, we can get our transition matrix, T. The T just has all of the entries from this table from before. So we have this 0 0.5 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 0 0.05, 0 0.8, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and a 0 0.6. And that's our transition matrix. And the last thing we need for our Markov chain is our initial probability vector. So I'm going to say our initial probability vector of this piece of 0 is going to equal a uh, column vector, 1, 0, 0. So it's hard to say what this, prob what this initial, uh, the initial uh, probability vector means without defining what each of these variables are. So let's look at this top one, this p sub 1, comma, n. And I'm going to define this as being the probability the economy will be in a recession
in n years. And so we've got a 1 on this first uh, entry of the initial probability factor. And this comes back from our, our second assumption that this year is recession. So similarly, we have p sub 2 comma n. And this is the probability the economy will be in a bull market. n years. And then finally, p sub 3 comma n. This is the probability we're going to be in a bear market in n years. So we're given uh, the next bullet, which asks us, what is the probability that you will be in a recession, bull, or bear market next year. So to, so to find this, what we're actually trying to find is this vector p sub 1. And we can compute this vector by multiplying together our transition matrix T with our initial probability vector p sub 0. And at this point, you could do it by hand, or you could do this matrix multiplication using uh, Mathematica. And I guess I would recommend Mathematica, because although this one may be easy, the next two are going to be quite a bit more difficult. Either way, your answer will be this column vector, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0 0.4. Now, we've just defined these, these variables, but let's talk through this one more time. So what this means is that in one year, you'll have a 0.5 probability, or 50% chance, that you'll be in a recession, a 10% chance that you'll be in a bull market, and a 40% chance you'll be in a bear market. So the next question says, what about 10 years from now? So similarly, you can use this same method, computing P10, and we can use our analytic solution outlined in section 3 of, uh, this, of this section, and we say the P10 equals this transition matrix multiplied together 10 times, then multiplied by our initial probability vector. And this equals the, the column vector 0 0.192, 0 0.445, and 0.358. And again, there's a 19.2% chance we'll be in a recession of 44.5% chance that we'll be in a bull market and a 35.8% chance we'll be in a bear market in 10 years. And then it asks us, after many years, what's our probability? So, I don't know, how many, how many years should we decide? You, could, you can decide that, but at this point, it's, this kind of shows how handy uh, Mathematica can be. So, if we decide that a thousand years is enough time, we could say that P of 1,000 is equal to this transition matrix multiplied together a thousand times with itself, and then multiplied by initial probability vector. And the answer becomes a point 0.189, a point 0.453, a point 0.358. And again, this is just the probability that after many years you'll be in a recession, a bull market, or a bear market. And the next bullet asks, does this long-term probability change if we're in a bull market today? So if we were in a bull market this year, the only thing that would change about our problem is our initial probability vector. So instead of having our probability vector defined as the column vector 1, 0, 0, we now define it as 0, 1, 0. And you can perform these same operations again, finding you know, this uh, p of 1,000, but with this new, with this new uh, initial condition vector, or initial probability vector, and then you're going to come to the same answer. And then finally it asks, what if we're in a bear market today? So at this point, our initial probability vector is going to equal... Zero, zero, 001. But again, if we, if we use this initial probability vector uh, 
to find out p of 1,000, we're going to come to the same answer. So regardless, this new p of 1,000 equals, again, 0 0.189, 0 0.453, 0 0.358. And down here, with this other initial probability vector, it comes to the same answer, 0.189. 0.453 and 